power draws a crowd. Perhaps though that here well, we'll find something captured which escapes contemplation. Bill Evans. Los Angeles, California, May 10th, 2014, 10.04 a.m., eight seconds. Oz, what are you doing here? Always the same question. In the neighborhood? He always gives the same answer. Since when is Southwest your neighborhood? And always the same question and response but the neighborhood never matters, or the city, or even the country. Osgur never belongs. On my way to Santa Rosalia Drive for lunch, I always break for blue lights. Is it even 10? Post and Beam has a pretty good lunch. Turkey meatballs, spicy tomato sauce. You have no idea what you're missing, Belasco. I work here, I don't eat here. Detective Rodney Belasco has worked the Southwest Division homicide table for a few years now, but even back when he and Osgur had found their sorrows in Hollenbeck, or later in Newton Division, he was famous for preparing all his meals at home, and Captain Snell and Meek never complained because Belasco never called in a Code 7. Meal break. Meal break. Night or day, he carried with him these nesting bento boxes, which for all their elaborate finish rarely held anything more than barbecue chips and smoked turkey on the whitest possible bread. He'd even bring his own coffee. While most cops don't live in the area they work, few refuse local eateries. You won't catch me getting shot dead at some drive through Reportedly, Belasco wouldn't even crap or take a leak in Area 3. For a while, he was known as Bottle, either because he bottled it all up or used a bottle. Though there were other reasons for that nickname, which earned him a six-month hiatus, but Oz never confirmed whether it was strictly to dry out or something worse. Velasco starts heading back toward the Korean market, tilting his umbrella behind him as if that might shield him from Osgur at his heels. It's hard to say when the two began knocking heads. They never partnered, never worked the case together. When their investigations did overlap, exchanges were always cordial and efficient. Yet at some point, Osgur began to grate on this D.I.I. D. D. Two. Two. Maybe it was as simple as Osgur promotion to D.I.I.I. D. D. Three. Three. Or Belasco's failure to find an assignment at Robbery Homicide Division or even F.I.D. Forget major crimes. One morning the sneers started coming and never stopped. Not that this detective who carries out his duty with a look of futile resignation is without bite. Like now, strolling as close as he can to a white marked park PII. P P two two. Dog. A good bite counts on calculation. Long time, Oz, Officer Naira Carlton bristles and smiles. Same as when she had her clothes off, always bristling and smiling. Still think I'm a bitch? Well, some people think I'm an asshole. You're kidding, Naira smiles. Who thinks you're not an asshole? Followed by a P.I. P. P. One. One. Named Stan Gebbes, who was green enough to believe all the stories about Osgur still out there doing their damage. He had that smitten look, quavering for attention and opportunity. Detective Yildrum, you wanna? I'd rather shoot myself in the face and live. Nice! Naira yells after him. You made Stan cry. Again! Not that she loses the smile. Probably bristling, too. Oz realizes he misses seeing her with her clothes off. Helicopter still overhead. KTLA and LAPD. Journalists by van and taxi. Police scanner twittiest. What a former South Bureau deputy chief name, nicknamed Pess. Supervising sergeant already running things. Even DRE. Though Osgur has yet to sense any drug connect. It all looks robbery, homicide. No NED in sight. But patrol cars keep arriving. It's iffy. Sat our only suspect down one block east of Arlington, Velasco sighs when it's clear Osgur isn't going to get caught up in the stickier side of those he knows or those who know him. Though hasn't that always been his problem? The stickiness of others never quite applied, especially when there's a body around. In this case, too, not that Velasco has given up anything Oz didn't already pick up from the RTO before badging through the outer perimeter over at South Van Ness. 
Water sheets down from the sky. Cross pavement. Gutters roar. Drain pipes gurgle all along the low stucco buildings from Worldwide Taco on 3rd Avenue to Living Truth Christian Fellowship to this place by Consolidated Auto, Martin Luther King Boulevard. And that's based on a 390 as our young blood, I mean, Crip, hoofing it along the sidewalk there. A real party, Velasco sneers. I like parties. Oz, you've never liked parties. People change. Velasco smooths his tie. Get out of here. But Belasco catches himself. Even the sneer wavers. I mean, get out of the rain. A hat like that's not enough. You find the gun yet? Left right next to her. Filed and spent. Of course, Belasco's right. Osgar should get out of the rain. He doesn't even have an umbrella. Belasco sure as hell isn't sharing his. Men a lot younger than him, soaked through like this, can get horrible things in their lungs and die on a respirator days later. But Oz loves rain, almost as much as he loves the city. Oz has lived and worked her streets for over 27 years. And one thing stays true. He never gets sick of the way she rises up at dawn, the way she grows smokier come dusk, and the way during a big storm like this she falls down and her mascara runs. Do not apply gendered language to urban zones, Elaine warns whenever Oz acts like some sailor talking about his ship, letting slip a feminine reference to this place where they both live. He can't say she's wrong. After all, what kind of woman contains this scene? Because if this were, was mascara, it was red. A seep of blood still washed over the sidewalk. The Korean woman still agape at a sky streaking indifferently down upon her. Small palms cupping clear puddles. Her husband never got past the counter. The ventricles of his mind sprayed across a shelf of Hennessy and soju. True the closed circuits were non-operational? Osgur asks. Velasco nearly spits, disappearing inside the market. The alleged perp still sits cuffed on the curb. The boot who made the grab keeps close, sharing an umbrella with his prize, the perp's backpack. Money in there? Oscar asks. The boot shakes his head. Panicked and ran without taking a thing. The kid doesn't look particularly bothered by the rain. Rain isn't going to change him. Panicked and ran doesn't exactly apply. He's a minor and Belasco wants him brought in right. He doesn't want any pests Instagramming his face. The kid flashes a smile. But when the smile is only faintly answered, he tries to mad dog Osgar. Osgar doesn't even think to turn away. Turning away isn't something Oz does. A stab then to his guts. That hello pain isn't already scheduling his next week. What Osgar can't ignore and doctors still can't diagnose. Maybe spicy tomato for lunch isn't such a good idea. Not like a second choice. Fried chicken at m and Soul Food on Crenshaw would be an improvement, especially after another night of scotch, of Miles Davis, of Elaine. Oz had given up cigarettes. He wasn't going to give up coffee or scotch and put him in a grave now if he had to give up Miles or Elaine. Guess he wasn't much of a D3 anymore to admit that last part. Of course, if his waking appetite had led him to the pantry instead of Jackson Joe for the Portuguese sausage, impossible to reach due to a Revlon 5K at the Coliseum, Oz would have taken the 10 instead of MLK and wouldn't be standing here with an empty stomach locking eyes with a kid who has nothing to lose. Rain not too much for you? The kid just sucks teeth. Marvin Dorgendrell, a.k.a. Android. 17, maybe. Muscled up. Juvie circuit training doubtless carrying some kind of jacket, probably more like a parka, black but with a splash of dairy, Jamaican maybe, even Costa Rican. Not that skin can describe what colors claimed. His do-rags blue enough, plus the jeans, blue, shirt, blue again, and a navy hoodie. This being Vernon Corridor probably puts young android with rolling 40s or 46 top dollar hustler crips, likely jumped in years ago and reworked ever since. Never innocent enough, never innocent long enough to learn how to feign innocence, which still doesn't mean he's a stone cold killer. What happened to your shoes? Android is barefoot. I said already, some fool with more metal than a bus took him from me. Havanians, too. Android's lids flinch like even, like even that's saying too much. The only other flicker of interest comes when Osgar takes another look at the backpack. Light as a hat, definitely no money. Officers keep searching roofs, 
trash bins, and storm drains. Others climbed fences, canvassed the neighborhood, put out a plea for witnesses more reliable than a drunk who apparently was trying to score a sherm when he happened to notice this kid, all flared out, just hustling along. The K-9 unit has arrived now, but the two dogs seem at least momentarily mystified by the, in the downpour. A couple of P2s finally pull the boot off his prized Miranda eyes Android and disappear him into the back of their shop. Who knows what some ADA will say, RFC'd upon arrival, may even kick loose as an 849B1 until, until as someone here at this party finds something better than an empty backpack. Past Arlington. That's the way Belasco said the kid had gone. And then in the few minutes it takes to unpocket some cedars sugar-free and spread the foil, Oscar learns the scene is now triple homicide. The woman was pregnant, seven months pregnant. Also, it appears that the cash in the register was not the only thing he touched. A small floor vault was also robbed. Curiously, only the big bills were taken. Ones, fives, and tens all behind. Osger contemplates the gum fold. Cutlerium. I fold. I fold. To the east, Consolidated Auto across Arlington. New Heights, Charter School, a palm tree, Pines, and across from Coin Laundry and Lucky Liquor. To the west, an abandoned office building, gate locked, but one door blown open, a mailbox on the corner with a sticker of Elmo LCF, 2nd Avenue, Jacarandas in Bloom, Living Truth. Osgur goes wide, ducking under police tape, distancing himself from flashing cars, body bags, now zip, lift, lifted and stowed, and one unenthused news crew. Power draws a crowd, but what's the power here? Katla. The dead? Gunshots? Katla, Katla. The theft? The response? Katla, Katla. Or the plan? Katla, Katla, Katla. A whore, all emerald, teeters along on emerald peak toe wedges, one hand on an emerald purse, the other palm up, carrying a tamale and a napkin. A walk of shame without the shame, just soaked through. Maybe her emerald sunglasses make that less obvious, or less important. The scene here doesn't even check her pace. Katla. But Osger can't stop thinking of that backpack. Why are you still here? Naira asks. Her hair looks lighter. She used to be red. I'd like to tell him reds were the result of Viking rapes. Some part of us, and you know my part, likes it. Not Osger. Whatever fantasies he had with her, playing a Viking wasn't one. Detective Yildiri, I'm sorry if I sound too... It's just such an honor, really. Can I get your autograph? For real, Gebbis? Naira too shocked to bristle, let alone laugh. And the P P1 is in fact holding out a pen in what looks like a program from the baked potato. Good club, Osga responds. But like the emerald whore, already gone, not breaking stride. Though maybe he should stop and answer Naira's question. Maybe he should stop mistaking a habit for love. Maybe he should stop thinking of Los Angeles as a woman and consider more closely the woman who sometimes shares his bed. And as Osgur gazes around, not so much searching but listening, open to whatever possibilities what's possible now can't suggest, not to mention all the wet, Katla. When was Oz last at the baked potato, Katla? Doing his best not to forget how even in this storm there's a jam all around, like fast brushes, high keys, model scales, Katla, Katla. Maybe even Paul Chambers' obligados, so what? Miles is what? Katla, that's what. With every now and then an emerald queen for sale, and more on sale, Katla, Katla, Katla. Rain music slapping multifold, high to low, 12 bar or not, with someone in there, with somewhere in there too, Katla. Now and then, Katla. Coltrane and Cannonball Adderley, of the, off the brim of Oscar's hat, off his overcoat. Protective layers no more dis dampening a storm than funneling water onto his legs, slack sponging the water, filling his shoes, toes practically swimming, almost a floating feeling, barely in touch with socks, let alone any ground, Katla, can almost dance, Katla, I should learn how to dance. Of course, there's romance in such blues. Elaine reduced romanticism to longing. And what's worse, she said, the preservation of longing serves only to justify the preservation of distance. 
which is freakly inhuman, at least selfish, and regrettably mean, which Osgur recognizes had been to, said to him in the meanest of ways. Either he was that or it was all a posture. But listening to Lady Day is no act, or Miles Davis, or Art Pepper, or Chet Baker. Not to mention rereading Chandler, Hammett, Philip K., friends since he moved to the U.S. as a teenager, with just enough coin for the used bins once set up along Melrose, Hollywood Boulevard, or Franklin. The great Hawkshaws had taught him English and maybe even to love scotch, though 18-year-old McCollin doesn't require a teacher, just good taste. That goes for old watches, too. Rain. He's always loved. Origami came from Blade Runner. 1982. When he had, had identified more with Gaff and Deckard. And if he began as a posture, the overcoat, the trilby, standing just like the characters of his immigrant reveries might have stood, until eventually he no longer resembled a character of Marlowe. But if anything, Marlowe looked like a character of him. When had that happened? When did the idea of a peace officer become this reality outstripping the fiction that had gotten him filling out an application to the police academy? Not that such questions have any more hold on him than Jimmy Cobb's brushes soft in the rain. Because Osgur isn't thinking about Marlowe or even Chandler, but as Chandler might have wanted and Marlowe would have understood, when you're standing in the rain where the dead have lain and the blood has mostly washed away, it makes sense then to think only of her. Katla, Katla, Katla. And she'd been there, last night's there, in a warm, close clutch, the smartest, sexiest clutch a 57-year-old man could dream up. And afterwards, with Evans and Miles painting hearts blue and green, and Osgur's night story windows framing a glitter of office lights and air traffic blinks, work and all warming, warning, Elaine had asked in a whisper what only his faint smile could fail to answer. But no matter what mysteries all her dark streets continued to promise, whether by vacant lots or concrete river bottoms or branching off like eyelashes, those long stretches of highway traffic, whether Main and Sixth or Hope and Flower, East Compton by way of commerce, to say nothing of Evelyn, of Neptune Avenue to Chinatown, or, that's right, Miss Wonderly, Broadway to Sunset, even Fountain to Hollywood. Betty Davis knew a thing or two, those silver familiars always overriding, if not quite preventing the whisper of still more of her streets. First steps in an unknown world after the last steps in an old world, where older streets still keep winding, off Tevesky Kadesi in Sicily or Suleimanye Kadesi near the Kalendari Mosque, or Yerubatan Kadesi or other curving routes near Golhain Park in Fatih, like smoke from those Gelenic cigarettes he used to love, giving rise somehow to more domes and minarets, ancient battlements upon which to look for fortunes on black currents. To say nothing of lessons in decency, beyond the reach now of still more of her nameless streets, or just one nameless street, where a tree of forgotten leaves, by a rain of forgotten stones, before windows framing forgotten intentions, in that season of unforgotten meanness, keeps reminding Osgur again and again that streets too can insinuate public as well as personal deeds. And if not exactly by memory, these streets still trace the way acts inevitably find guilt or justice, harm or kindness, sleeplessness or death. Maybe it was time to stop making longing a lover. Maybe it was time to get out of the rain. Katla. Before leaving, Osgur finds Detective Belasco and points to the southeast corner of MLK and second. He went that way first? Osgur shrugs. Only to double back? Belasco still not seeing it. I don't get it. Why? Look for the money inside. Maybe even some flip flops. Sealed up in big envelopes. And you didn't hear it from me, Osgur adds. Could be a federal crime too. There's even a letter carrier heading now toward the corner mailbox. Pith helmet and a s thick slicker sluicing water well away from his ankles. 
come rain or come shine, he was proof. Black bow-legged, an expression of solemn commitment, ambling along, uncontested. On the counter inside the market, Olsger places a foil owl. Steve Stephen Vice. He's already late for Cletitius Boo. He has to go. He doesn't want to go. Is that the answer he couldn't give Elaine when she propped herself up on her elbows? Her long black hair following over her naked olive shoulders, her dark lips whispering an exposure only midnight and drink and kind of blue legacy edition. 1959 to 2009. Ever permit. Will you ever leave this city? Los Angeles, California, May 10th, 2004, 10.38, 38 seconds.